Ah, uh, nothing excites me more than seeing that title screen. I reviewed every classic Mega Man game about two years ago. With the exception of Mega Man Base, the Wily Wars, the spin-offs, and all that. I'll get to those. But as you know, I love Mega Man. It's one of my top favorite video game franchises of all time. And I owe Mega Man 3 and this game for introducing me to the Blue Bomber. From what I understand, Classic Mega Man had already had five entries on the NES, with the six about to come out. Capcom finally had experience making games on the Super Nintendo, but we were going to go for something newer, faster. And that something was called Mega Man X. Kaiji Inafune's original design for X was something radically different, and we'll get to him as we go on. But we got some lore to go into, so let's get started. Mega Man X takes place in the year 21XX, about a century after the classic series which took place in 20XX. The biggest mystery of the X series is what happened to the classic series characters between their series and Mega Man X. There really is no official explanation despite a bunch of fan theories. At some point, Dr. Light began working on a new type of robot, Mega Man X. It is I, Thomas Light. I created you, X. X? You called me X. Is that my name? That's right. It's a variable. It represents limitless potential. You see, you are a new type of robot who can think for himself. Yes, X is the first of his kind. A robot who can think for himself. I know some people have some confusion over what the classic series characters have. I mean, Proto Man seemed to have free will, but that was a glitch in his system. Remember at the end of Mega Man 7 where Mega Man tried to kill Wily, but Wily reminded him that he couldn't do so because a robot cannot harm a human being. Despite what the English translation says, Mega Man couldn't do it because of that. But Dr. Light feared the repercussions of that. What if X broke that rule that he can't harm a human being? As the good doctor worked on X, he had grown old, and his time was about to come. Dr. Light intended to seal X away for 30 years so his reliability could be tested, asking that the capsule not be disturbed until then. But he knew he would not live to see that day. As X and Dr. Light shared one last goodbye, no one knew what the world would be like when X woke up. Doctor, I'll use this power to fight for justice. To fight for hope. Of course you will. I believe it to be so. X, I want you to use that conscience of yours to fight for the people of the future. They will need someone like you to guide them. Doctor. Farewell, X. You are the world's one true hope. Countless years pass when Dr. Kane, an archaeologist, comes across the ruins of Dr. Light's lab. Inside, he met X. Fascinated by X's design, Dr. Kane sought to emulate the design and created a new generation of robots he called Reploids. The Reploids were integrated into society, but Dr. Kane made a mistake. He didn't test the Reploids like Dr. Light did for X. Thus, reports came out that Reploids were going maverick. Thus, the Maverick Hunters organization was formed, led by Commander Sigma, who was designed to be the most powerful replicate of them all. X was constantly left wondering about what Dr. Light had planned for him, so despite joining the Maverick Hunters, X was inhibited by hesitation, unable to act at the fear of hurting someone. Sigma often told X that he must become both sword and shield to defend their human creators. But despite this, X had Zero, his best friend who always stood by him. With the Maverick Hunters, there was always a fear that they too could go Maverick. Cause someone to go Maverick anyway. Program errors, short circuits in the electronic brain. The very things that give us Reploids our advanced processing power could also be our greatest weakness. Among those was Vile, a renegade Reploid who acted out violently. But one day Dr. Kane's worst fear happened. Sigma had gone Maverick. The day of Sigma claims he was motivated by X's ability to grow and evolve Reploids, but Mega Man X4 implied something else that we will get to then. Making his attack, Sigma declared that a new world would be born. 
Also, strangely enough, the OVA seems to kill off Dr. Kane here, even though he's alive and well in X2 and X3, so... Yeah. With everything in place, Sigma made his challenge to X. That is quite the hammy laugh, having way too much fun. Well, that was quite the journey. It's time to begin the game with an opening stage. X-Series has always had this, although Mega Man 7 and 8 would use this. It really sets the difference in tone from the Classic Series and the X-Series. X is the future, and things haven't gone very well. But wow, comparing the upgrade from Classic to this is just mesmerizing. I love this game so much. X can run, charges Buster like Mega Man, and he has the ability to wall kick, which is an ability I just love. The opening stage is perfect. It sets the tone of the universe well, and sucks you right in. You have these flying enemies coming at you. You feel so powerful, like nothing can stop you. Nothing stands in the way of you and your X Buster. Suddenly you get to the end, and down from the airship comes Vile in his rider armor. He looks like Boba Fett. So the first boss of the game, only you notice he doesn't have a life bar and Vile just absolutely annihilates you. You can't do anything to hurt him. That's such a great way of luring in the sense of helplessness in the player because you were so unstoppable. But now you're getting killed. Now that is how you introduce a character. In the span of a single moment, Zero sets the mood. You couldn't beat Vile, but he could, in just one shot. The relationship between X and Zero is perfectly established in one conversation. Thus the journey is set. From here, the formula is strictly Mega Man. You have eight bosses, you can tackle them in any order you want, you get their weapons, you use that weapon to defeat the boss as they are all weak to a different weapon, rinse and repeat, it's just everything is EXTREME! That's not a bad thing. X1 also has different gameplay elements to their stages. Flame Mammoth is a fiery pit, Chill Penguin is in the Arctic region, but if you clear Chill Penguin stage, the lava will be frozen over in the Flame Mammoth stage and allow easier progression. I really love design choices like that. I'll get into them more. What X has that Classic doesn't is heart containers. Basically, you don't start with max health like Classic Mega Man does. X has to find these pieces to gain health, and I get the idea of it, and I like discovering them, but some of them are so annoyingly placed. In addition to that, Mega Man X has sub-tanks which take the place of energy tanks. Unlike those, you have to fill these up yourself. You get up to four of them, and I really do like this system. I'll get into the other upgrades in a bit, because now we are going to cover the stages starting with Flame Mammoth. As I did this level first, I noticed that the lava streams are still there. It has newly assembled replays coming out of the ground, and you don't get access to the upgrades right away. This seems to be a garbage disposal with things coming down to crush you. This stage also has these annoying shield enemies that I really wish I could power past their shield. But it's a perfectly fine introductory level. The Battle of Flame Mammoth takes place on a conveyor belt. Once again, I find the strategy of getting to the boss then dying to refill your health to be good. Flame Mammoth has several attacks. He'll try to stick you in place with his oil and burn you. This boss battle really makes good use of the wall jump as you need to constantly jump over him when you get too close to the edge. One boss down, seven to go. The next level is Chill Penguin, which is appropriate. Taking place on an Arctic base, you have these axe enemies who keep sending things at you, and they're not too challenging to deal with. It definitely feels like this level was intended to be first because they throw the first upgrade for X at you in the way, you can't miss it. Dr. Light left behind some castles for X in case he ever needed them. There's something more to these castles as we will see later on. Light gives you the foot parts which allow X to dash and this is such a useful ability that it becomes mandatory for future games. You can dash in two ways, pressing the dash button or pressing the D-pad in the direction you want to go twice. Both have their uses. 
This level also introduces you to the ride armor, which gives you added defense, and I love being in control of these things as it allows for added power. It's time to fight Chill Penguin. His main attack is to shoot you with shotgun ice, or create sculptures that will try to crush you with. Fortunately, the fire wave makes him completely vulnerable, and in no time he will go down. You can also fight him first, it doesn't really matter. Spark Mandrel's stage has these very annoying spark enemies, and sparks that shoot out of nowhere, as well as quarters that get very dark when you go through, and it has this very annoying mini-boss that will make you hate life and everything on it. He shoots water at you and lightning. Those two things do not go well together. But with the fire wave, he goes down very easily. More dark corridors, and you can see why this level is not high on my favorites list. Spark Mandrel, however, stands as the easiest boss in the game. Because Shotgun Ice completely resets his pattern and leaves him with almost no time to do anything. Somebody made faulty programming there. Next up is Armored Armadillo. What this level is most notable for is the slowdown. Whenever X is on a card and there's lots of enemies around, the game can't handle that many enemies on screen at once. Twice there's a steamroller, but if you take it out with the fire wave, this will allow you to access more items. I love how the special weapons are used to make progress. It's also a great place to fill your sub tanks. The boss, Armored Armadillo, is protected by his armor, but the electric spark will take off his armor and make him vulnerable. I really like that touch. His strategy is to roll around the room. When he stops, that's when you hit him. Once he loses his armor, you can hit him while he's rolling. It's a nice touch. So that's four Mavericks down, and four to go. Next up is Launch Octopus. An underwater base because of course it is. Like his predecessor, X doesn't move very fast in the water, but he can dash much higher into the air while underwater, which actually makes sense. Twice you have to fight these big subs. And the second time is even more annoying because you have spikes on the ground. So you hit them, you're dead, no matter what. I guess Dr. Light didn't think to remove that annoying feature when he built X. To get the heart tank, you have to fight this giant sea dragon, and it's pretty easy, as all you have to do is stand behind him and attack and make sure you don't fall into the spikes. As for launching Octopus, he just shoots out missiles at you. And the rolling shield doesn't do as much stun damage as the other weapons do. I got down to one bit of health, but I managed to win, and that's always satisfying. Well, off to Boomer Kowanger's level, or Boomerang Kowanger, as he was renamed in Maverick Hunter X. This level is a long vertical climb. I see no way to really avoid most of the lasers, so you just have to dodge past them. This level contains the long vertical climb, as you have to avoid turrets, enemies, spikes, all that as you climb your way to the boss. The boss, Boomer Kowanger, is a good boss because it tests your reflexes. I find that using the dash button as you wall kick off a wall is best to cover long distances. The homing torpedo does its job well of homing in on your enemy. Kowanger's main strategy is to charge at you, but it's nothing you can't avoid. So now Sting Chameleon stage, which takes place in a lust forest. It's a nice atmosphere to the level. Really, what this level has is the mini boss that hides the body upgrade. It's a nice straightforward fight that relies on the Mega Buster to damage its sole weak point. The body upgrade decreases damage done to X by 50%. Now that's something I can get behind. I love how I can use the SNES L and R buttons to switch between weapons on the fly, that's always nice. Sting Chameleon, as befitting to his name, likes to turn invisible. Fortunately, the Boomerang Cutter does a good job homing in on him, and causes quite a bit of setback to him. So with that down, there's only one boss to go, Storm Eagle. Storm Eagle's level takes place on an airship, and I love this level. There's so many hidden goodies to find, and the atmosphere is just so breathtaking. Tight platform jumps are to be expected in a level like this. It's here you get the head parts which allow X to break things with his head. Use your head, huh? Storm Eagle can be a tricky boss. He likes to swoop down and attack you. The Chameleon Sting doesn't really stun him. It just does slightly more damage than an X Buster shot. But in no time, I beat him. And as Zero says, it's off to fight Sigma. But first, we got some parts to collect. The X Buster upgrade is so annoyingly placed, you have to dash and jump at just the right spot to be able to get up to where you have to go. If you miss, well, you can't get it, you have to exit and re-enter the stage. The X Buster upgrade is really useful aside from being a more powerful charge shot. You can even charge your special weapons and it's so fun to experiment with what they can do. I especially love how charging rolling shield gives you a shield around you. But there's one more upgrade that you can get. You have to go to Armored Armadillo's stage, get to the end, and die four times and then you will find Dr. Light where he will give you the Hadouken. You have to be at full health in order to use it, and it one-shots everything, including bosses. Why'd you hold this out for me, Dr. Light? I never knew you were a Street Fighter fan. 
Does Street Fighter take place in the same universe as Mega Man? First, Sigma Stage Zero goes on ahead, leaving you to deal with this very annoying vertical climb. Once you get there, Vile shows up and Zero goes on to take care of him. You fall, but all you hear is the sound of them fighting. Going inside, Zero is in a cage. Once again, despite all your power, you can't hurt Vile in his ride armor. All seems lost, but Zero makes his move. X summons a bunch of health from nowhere. Okay, anime power up I guess. For such a long awaited fight, Vile is actually pretty easy. He doesn't do anything other than jump around and shoot his arm cannon at you. In no time he goes down, but the cost was too high. Poor Zero, this will not become a trend. <laughs> yeah, right. Also, if you don't have the arm can upgrade, Zero will give you his. A nice touch. I think this fight happens a bit too early, and I think Maverick Hunter X made a good change in having it happen in Stage 3. The boss of this stage, the Bow Spider, is really annoying to fight, because you can only damage it once on the ground, and if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you will get hit. Mega Man X takes a cue from Mega Man 1 in that the rematches with the bosses are done throughout the levels rather than at the end with teleportation devices. I'm on and off as to which method I prefer. The Storm Tornado is a great weapon that really cuts things up, especially Flame Mammoth again. The boss Rangda Bangda is a giant face on the wall. How creative. The walls will close in on you and that's when you have to be quick on your feet. The eyes will fly around and everything will come at you. Stage 3 brings back underwater levels since this is mainly a gauntlet of whatever bosses you didn't refight. Which finally leads us to D-Rex, which is just... whatever this is. It's actually really easy and much less tedious than the last two boss fights, but now it's time to confront Sigma. The game gives you a way to restock your sub-tank if you're low, which is nice of them to do that. So finally you confront Sigma, but he decides to sick his dog on you first. How nice. The dog is actually just a warm-up for what you have to go through with Sigma, so just be quick on your feet. And now it's time to confront Sigma. He pulls out his lightsaber and the fight begins. The fight is not that much different from fighting his dog. He'll jump around and you have to avoid his blows. He can block your attack if he's holding his saber the right way, but when that's done, it's time to fight his final form. The final form can only be hurt by a fully charged X-Buster or the Rolling Shield. The way to attack is fairly simple, just get on one of the hands and wait for it to come down. In no time, you land the final blow. Sigma voices that the replates could have ushered in a new age. So X teleports out and watches the destruction he helped cause. He does this a lot, actually. Mega Man X is one of my favorite video games of all time. Its soundtrack, its gameplay, its challenge, its story and lore, it's all so close to perfection that I dare say this is the closest we'll ever get to a perfect video game. I can't wait to see what my revisit for the series will give me. If you're going to play Mega Man X, you have to start here. If you are Mega Man X, but the series was only just beginning. Join me next time when we cover Mega Man X 2. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video please hit that bell, like, and subscribe button. If you want updates, follow me on Twitter, or join my Discord which I provided in the description below. See you later!